All right, hello, hello everyone, and welcome back to lesson four of the new study design for unit three, area study one, microeconomics. Today, we're gonna to be looking at the law of supply. So yesterday we looked at the law of demand, or last lesson we looked at the law of demand, which is all about consumers and things that impact how consumers spend their money. So now we're gonna be looking at the law of supply, which is all about businesses and what impacts businesses' motivation, whether it be from a selling price perspective or whether it be from things other than selling price changing, causing whole new supply curves. So we're gonna get straight into it with our key knowledge which is the law of supply, the theory of the law of supply, including profit motive, as we know businesses really want profit, and the supply curve, including movements along and shifts of the supply curve, and the non-price factors that affect the supply and position of the supply curve, including changes in cost of production, number of suppliers, technology, productivity, and climatic conditions. So how all of those things, without changing the selling price initially, can change the overall quantity supplied. So once again, Learning intention, as always in this topic, has been to understand how resources are allocated in Australia, in this case, how businesses will allocate their resources. So our success criteria today is that you can define the law of supply, you can draw a fully labelled supply curve, and you can distinguish between a movement and a shift of the supply curve. So much like with demand, a movement is always from a change in selling price and shift is always from a non-price factor. So right now, with the law of supply, as price increases, the quantity supplied increases. This is because businesses are going to have increased profit in that instance. So I know some students are already gonna be thinking, well, if the price goes up, people won't wanna buy it. We don't care about that right now. What we care about is if the price increases and all other things are equal, businesses are gonna supply more because it means they're gonna make more profit. And then on the same hand, or on the other hand, as price decreases, businesses wanna supply less because it is less profitable. And that's the main thing there. So you can use either of those as the definition. So with supply, you always need to think from the business's point of view. So for example, businesses want profit and therefore if prices rise, you supply more to make more money. So when we draw a supply curve, it's very similar to our demand curve. The things you need to do for full marks are going to be your title, like we said before, always the market for whatever good or service it is. Y axis being prices with the units there, X axis being quantity, potentially with the units there. And then you're gonna be drawing a supply curve, which is sloping upwards. One of my favorite things a student ever said that always makes me remember how to do a supply curve is that supply has up in the word and the supply curve slopes upwards. And so that's always the last thing you need to do for the supply curve. That's upward sloping supply curve with an S at the end. So how we use this supply curve, first we're gonna talk about movements in supply. So when we talk about movements in supply, it's all about changes in selling price. So movements equals changes in selling price. So the cost of making it hasn't changed. It's just how much it sells for has changed. So when the selling price decreases, so let's just say it goes from $4 to $2 because they're the numbers that I always use, suddenly businesses want to supply less overall as we move from Q1 to Q2, and we call that a contraction of supply. So business is supplying less because it's gonna be less profitable. And then if we do the opposite of that, if the price increases from $2 to $4, we're gonna move from Q2 to Q1, we call that an expansion of supply as businesses are increasing the amount they supply because it's gonna be more profitable. Once again, that terminology of expansions and contractions is incredibly important. Then we also have shifts of supply. So shifts of supply are caused by non-price factors that either increase or decrease the overall supply without the price changing, much like for demand, but this, in this case, it's things that directly impact businesses without impacting price. So once again, similar to demand is that a favorable shift is always to the right and an unfavorable shift is always to the left. So when you do that, you just draw another a new line either to the right or the left of the supply curve and call it either S1 or S2, depending on how many shifts you've had to do. Usually it will only be one, but as we can see, if we set a price at the same price, there is either going to be less or more demanded. So when there's an unfavorable shift, if we have QE2, that's gonna be less demanded overall. If we've got the first one here, that's the original amount demanded. Then if there's a favorable shift, we're gonna have more demanded over, I mean, more supplied overall. So things that cause these non-price factor shifts, so it can be anything, it really boils down to two main things for the law of supply. So the two main non-price factors, even though we're gonna look at a whole list, every non-price factor for supply 
can be linked to one of two things. The first one is anything that changes cost of production. And then the second one is anything that changes a business's efficiency or productivity. Either one of those two things is going to either cause a favorable or unfavorable shift in supply. So the key ones here, so we've got them here. So anything that changes the business's cost of production. So if their cost of resources change, if electricity changes in price, if the rent changes, wages change, tax rates change, or subsidies change, these are all gonna change and create a shift in supply. So if I was to draw that as an example here, let's just say, for example, we have been having floods a lot recently. And those floods actually damage resources and make resources more expensive. And that's gonna cause an unfavorable shift in supply and shift supply to the left. The final product is still the same selling price. It's just the things you need to make that product have gotten more expensive. So that's gonna cause an unfavorable shift. Then we also have things that change the productivity or efficiency of a business. So things like new technology or education and training for workers. If that is the case, you're gonna have your supply curve if you train your workers, they're gonna now get more output per unit of input. Your costs haven't changed, but you're suddenly able to supply more at the same price, therefore causing a favorable shift overall. Another thing that can cause that is research and development where you're learning new ways to produce that are gonna maximize your efficiency overall. And that is it for the law of supply. A little bit quicker, because it's very, very similar to demand, but all focused on businesses. Next lesson, things are gonna get a little bit more tricky when we draw supply and demand on the same curve and make a nice little X-shaped diagram like that and talk about equilibriums, how they change, what it means when prices are set above or below the equilibrium and how new equilibriums are formed. But if you have any questions about supply, feel free to leave a comment below or email me, sean at therunningeconomy.com. Hope you had a wonderful day and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.